Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again with a Stew's News special federal inner city passenger rail funding report. The Federal Railroad Administration has released its selections for their Federal State Partnership for Intercity Passenger Rail Program grants. But wait, there's more. As a bonus, they also released these Corridor ID grants absolutely free. That's a two for one offer, folks. Let's look at the FSP National Grants first because that's where the big money comes in. I'll go by award amount this time. First off, California High Speed Rail. As the thumbnail states, 2023 is the revenge of California High Speed Rail. Receiving $3.07 billion from this grant program over the next few years. That brings the California High Speed Rail Federal total awarded this year to about $3.3 billion. If you want to know more about the fiscal challenges California High Speed Rail is currently facing, check out my video in the card. What does this mean for California High Speed Rail? It means they will be able to finish constructing the initial 119 mile segment. It means they will be able to install track and systems there. And it means train set procurement. Basic construction is scheduled to be done by the end of 2026 with the last of the track and systems laid the following year. This federal money will also pay for final design and preliminary construction on the 52 total miles of extension to Merced and Bakersfield. This portion of the project is still underfunded by about $5 billion, which the California High Speed Rail Authority would need to find in about the next five years to stay on schedule for actually running trains with passengers sometime between 2030 and 2033. This $3 billion is also significant because Prop 1A bond funds tacitly require a 50% match. This funding in conjunction with California cap and trade receipts will allow the California High Speed Rail Authority to tap the remainder of those bond funds and put them to use. So a big turnaround for California High Speed Rail in terms of outlook. In March, things were not so hot when they announced they were short on funds for Merced to Bakersfield. This reiteration of federal support at least gives them some momentum in completing the 171 mile Merced to Bakersfield initial operating segment. Up next, still partially in California, $3 billion went to the Brightline West project between Las Vegas, Nevada and Rancho Cucamonga in Southern California. That's a lot of party cars. Brightline has yet to reveal anything new so far, but they did just receive Surface Transportation Board approval to begin construction. Given the logistic challenges of organizing and starting a project of this size, this means principal construction probably won't start for a few months still. However, it can start and they now have funds to start in earnest. Their basic plan is to prep the right of way for a couple of years, then lay track and systems all in one year then several months of testing and certification, and then carry passengers in time for the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. Can they do it? If they can, this has broad implications for construction of high-speed rail in a similar manner in other parts of the country, so we'll keep an eye on it. Switching to the East Coast, we next have Richmond to Raleigh, connecting Virginia and North Carolina on the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor. Keep in mind, the federal government has a different definition of high speed rail than the rest of the world. This is the 110 mile per hour top speed diesel electric variety. I'm covering it because this is foundational incremental work toward a future faster electrified line that could extend all the way to Atlanta and connect the major cities of the East Coast minus Florida. R to R got $1.1 billion. The total project cost is estimated at $1.4 billion. This is going to allow them to significantly upgrade most of the 162 mile CSX S line route between the two cities, part of which is now owned by the state of Virginia. This is similar to the recently completed upgrades in Illinois between Chicago and St. Louis, and the expected result is similar. They're looking to cut about 80 minutes off current travel times for an average of 72 miles per hour. No, it's not high speed rail, but this would be one of the fastest American inner city trains upon completion. They're looking to be done by 2033. 
Also in the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor is Phase 2 of the Transforming Rail in Virginia project. The larger project involves Virginia's acquisition of 384 miles of right-of-way from CSX and extensive plans to upgrade and utilize it for passenger rail. The portion in question here centers on the long bridge over the Potomac River between Washington, D.C. and Virginia. The plan is to double capacity by building a parallel, half-mile-long, fixed-span, double-tracked bridge. This project also includes some station improvements and 12 miles of new siding. The broader planned work in Virginia should cut 15 minutes off a trip from Richmond to D.C., but the main goal here is expansion of capacity and frequency, so speed is not currently a priority. Like the R2R work, this will not be high speed nor electrified, but I mention it as a foundation for the future on the Southeast High Speed Rail Corridor. The award amount for the project is $730 million. The project has a cost estimate of $2.6 billion. Pennsylvania got $143 million to facilitate a second round trip of Amtrak Pennsylvanian service between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. These are minor track and systems upgrades to make that second train possible through about 240 miles of Norfolk Southern freight traffic. This is not high speed. Actually, the Pennsylvanian is pretty slow even for Amtrak. However, this is the Keystone High Speed Rail Corridor. If you'd like to see what true high speed rail might look like through Pennsylvania, check out my video in the card and cover your ears whenever I say Anyway, Amtrak is looking to have that second round trip train in service by 2030. Chicago Hub was looking for about $900 million from the FSP National Program this year and got about a tenth of that in a minor snub. About $95 million goes to improvements at Chicago Union Station. This includes reactivating and renovating some old mail platforms for passenger use. Similarly, they will eliminate disused baggage platforms to facilitate expansion of some passenger platforms. They also got some money to improve air circulation aimed at better clearing diesel electric exhaust. Electrify everything and you don't have to worry about diesel exhaust, just saying. No current timeline for those projects. The last one we will concern ourselves with is the $27 million grant to improve track configuration in the Down Easter Corridor that runs between Boston, Mass. and Brunswick, Maine. The reason we cover it here is that a portion of this route is also part of the Northern New England High Speed Rail Corridor. They're looking to improve times through about 80 curves and add some passing sightings to improve reliability and eventually expand service should be done in a couple of years. Anything in the high speed realm is likely a long way off. Now let's shift to the other set of announcements, the Corridor ID program. Corridor ID is a program that helps intercity passenger rail projects create a service development plan. Work identified in those plans then receives priority when it comes to various federal grants. So it helps projects get organized and get federal money. The initial grants are all $500,000 for the service development plan. There were grants to 69 different routes. We're going to cover the seven high speed corridor ID grants. Number one, Amtrak Texas High Speed Rail Corridor. You may know this better as Texas Central between Dallas and Houston, Texas. This was previously a private venture now attempting to move into public private territory with the help of Amtrak. Number two, Brightline West High Speed Corridor, of course, between Rancho Cucamonga, California and Las Vegas, Nevada. They just got FSP money, so it shows that it's a priority thing and not an absolute thing. I doubt Brightline West will get more FSP money, but that's not the only federal grant program out there for intercity passenger rail. Number three, California High Speed Rail Phase 1 Corridor. This is the 500-mile section from San Francisco down to Anaheim. The FSP grant money they got this year went to one 171-mile section of that in the Central Valley. Same as Brightline West when it comes to FSP money, but California High Speed Rail has been passed over for a lot of federal grants in the past, 
So they definitely want that priority if they can get it. Number four, Cascadia High Speed Ground Transportation. This is the proposed project between Vancouver, British Columbia and Eugene, Oregon, currently mired in Project Study Hell. They were wanting $198 million from FSP this year to perform yet another study, but obviously didn't get it. Number five, the Charlotte to Atlanta corridor. This project has a tier one environmental impact statement. I've talked about the preferred route in the video in the card, so check it out. This is a roughly 280 mile route with a pretty reasonable price tag so far. This project will likely be looking for money to perform a tier two EIS. They might be able to pick up some FSP money at the tail end of that funding cycle around 2026 to get them started on construction. Number six, Fort Worth to Houston High Speed Rail Corridor. We've been covering Fort Worth to Dallas, but it's interesting they've included Houston. This project and Texas Central proposed the same station site in Dallas. So this looks to be collaborative. Currently the North Central Texas Council of Governments is working on a 30 mile long high speed train route between Fort Worth and Dallas, but the vision basically extends to the entire Texas Triangle. Number seven, High Desert Intercity High Speed Rail Corridor. This was a planned freeway corridor in the California desert that LA and San Bernardino counties decided not to build. Brightline wanted to run trains over this route to hook Brightline West up with California High Speed Rail at Palmdale. However, California High Speed Rail's snail's pace shifted the end point of Brightline West to Rancho Cucamonga, but they'd still like to hook up directly with California High Speed Rail and vice versa at some point in the future. That does it for the fiscal year 2022 and 23 federal intercity high speed passenger rail grants outside of the NEC. For the NEC grants, check out the video in the card. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. If you have any opinions about it or just high speed rail in general, please share them in the comments. A special thanks to the Lucid Group Discord channel for their help with this video. An extra special thanks to Ben from the Empire State Passenger Association for his work on the amazing thumbnail for the video. If you want to know what's happening with passenger rail in New York State, check out the ESPA website and Facebook page links in the description. If you'd like to join the continuing conversation in the Lucid group, there is an invite to that in the description as well. We have a great group in there and would love to welcome more people. More Stu's news to come on the last Friday of the month, more Federal Railroad Administration High Speed Rail Corridor videos, and more U.S. High Speed Rail City Pair videos in the pipeline as well. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.